Um, I hope that we, by some of the solutions we have seen during the day, avoid us getting into this strange kind of Atlantis which we saw here in the artistic work of Kit. What a day! Wow, it's been great spending time with you people, and now we have arrived at the celebration part of Trondheim Techport Conference. It's time to loosen up and to recognize some of the great achievements already being made. So, every year the municipality of Trondheim announces the winner of the Young Innovator Award. And what better place to announce this award than together with world leading innovators at Trondheim Techport Conference. To announce the award, the mayor of Trondheim and chair of the jury, Rita Otterwick, will attend this stage after us taking a look at this year's finalists for the Young Innovator Award. Kuline is an inventor and PhD candidate that works at the intersection of research and innovation. Her product, BeeMaker, is a web-based game to raise awareness among children and youth about the importance of balancing urban development and sustainability goals, while also sparking their interest for innovative technologies in a playful way. Maria is an enthusiastic entrepreneur with a passion for equality and inclusion. Her company, Capiche, is an AI-driven platform that bridges the gap between language learning and workforce training for multilingual companies. This enables equality and access to workforce training for employees in a language they understand, ensuring safety, compliance and inclusion in companies worldwide. Cristina is an entrepreneur with a vision, transforming the ocean into a fresh water source for all. Her company, Ocean Oasis, is developing a sustainable solution for the production of drinking water for those who need it most. Pure wave power is used as an energy source to desalinate seawater in an offshore floating facility. This is done without emissions or damage to the local environment. Thank you, Karianne, and congratulations to Trondheim Techport on hosting the best tech conference here in Trondheim, the capital city of Norwegian tech. As a tech capital, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Trondheim every year announces the winner of the Young Innovation Award. Innovator Award, sorry. The Young Innovator Award is a national award aimed at women under the age of 40 who work with innovation, especially within the fields of technology and science. The purpose of the award is to promote women who succeed to make their innovations even more recognized and to inspire others to choose the same path. The award is for an individual where the winner receives 100,000 Norwegian kroner. This year, we have three outstanding finalists, all of whom deserve credit in their own right. But without further ado, on behalf of the jury, I'm proud to announce the winner of the Young Innovator Award 2022. The winner has seeked to meet social challenges through machine intelligence, with its, um, which is uh, suitable for worldwide audience. Her adventure started within civil engineering and later continued at Entenu School of Entrepreneurship before becoming an entrepreneur in residence. Subsequently, she has worked with entrepreneurship and commercialization. The journey has led her to her latest role as the CEO and co-founder of Capiche, a language learning software which can tailor exercises in listening, pronunciation, and writing for more than 500 languages. The jury has been impressed by the winner's bold and modern way of thinking, the way she shares knowledge and for her distinguished pursuit of growth and impact. With an outstanding effort, toughness, and enthusiasm for the technology, 
Problem Solving and Growth, the winner of this year's Young Innovator Award is a true entrepreneur with a very promising future that we are very proud to support. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the jury and the municipality of Trondheim, the winner of the Young Innovator Award 2022 is Maria Jakobsen Levos. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this means so much, Sarita. And thank you, thank you so much. I'm so honored, especially to be here among so many great finalists uh, today. And I, I just must say that there's no better, <laughs> better stage to be on to win this reward because the theme of this year's conference is bridging the gap. And that's exactly what we're doing in the company I'm leading today, Capiche, where we're bridging the gap between workforce training and language learning, helping providing both migrants and underserved kids all around the world with jobs and yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you couldn't have gotten there without a great team behind you. And I must say that I'm so proud to be part of a very diverse team from this technology area in Kronheim, but also elsewhere, that's so willing to think forward leaning and also now today thinking that we can use our technology to open up even more. So now today when we're actually facing this crisis with Ukraine, we're decided to open up our platform and provide the capiche for free to all refugees that arrive in Norway. So I'm very proud to be part of this adventure. Thank you. Wow. Congratulations so much to Maria Lovos as the winner of this year's Young Innovator Award. Moving along, I'd now like to celebrate how two of the actors in Trondheim are leading the way with bridging the gap. Take a look at this video explaining the collaboration and partnership between Trondheim Municipality and NTNU. I 2018 signerte NTNU og Trondheim kommune avtalen om å bli universitetskommunen TRD 3.0. Men hva betyr egentlig det? Det handler om å gjøre det best mulig for alle innbyggerne i kommunen. For å sikre at Trondheim og Norge er et godt sted å bo nå og i fremtiden, så må vi tenke nytt. Universitetskommunen TRD 3.0 utnytter styrkene til kommunens praksis, forskningens kunnskap og studentene sin kreativitet. Samfunnet er i endring, og norske kommuner står overfor store utfordringer. Sosiale ulikheter, økende antall eldre, utenforskap og et klima i ubalanse er noen nevn. Disse utfordringene kalles samfunnsfloka, og de sprer seg ofte over flere sektorer. Fordi samfunnsflokene ofte er satt sammen av mange forskjellige problemer, så finnes det ikke en løsning som fikser alt. Derfor må vi samarbeide på mange fagområder. Hvordan sørger vi for at Selma får en best mulig skolestart, for eksempel? Hvordan sørger vi for at Ola kan bo hjemme så lenge som mulig og ha det bra der? Hvordan utvikler vi attraktive bydeler for både innbyggere og arbeidsliv? Hvordan kan vi lage grønne byggeplasser? Og hvordan i all verden kan vi bruke ny teknologi til å lage bedre tjenester for både unge og eldre? Gjennom åpne dører mellom kommunen og NTNU skal vi jobbe sammen for å løse viktige samfunnsutfordringer. I universitetskommunen TRD 3.0 skaper vi nye arbeidsformer som styrker NTNU, forbedrer kommunens tjenester og får kunnskap som hele landet kan dra nytte av. Intet mindre. So, I'm delighted to welcome back on stage with me uh, Anne Borg, director of NTNU, and Rita Otervik, the mayor of Trondheim Municipality. Rita, first of all, uh, why is this partnership so important for the municipality, the city, and, and the university? We have since uh, 2018 worked together with NTNU to try to bridge the gap between the knowledge among our employees in the municipality and the knowledge in the university, and try to get a better way of using the knowledge from both fields to improve our services, both for elderly people and for school children, for instance. Hmm. 
Um, uh, this sounds quite important for NTNU as well. Yes, of course it is, because it's, uh, it's a way for NTNU to uh, fulfill its uh, societal missions, uh, because that's really crucial uh, that we uh, collaborate with the public sector. And NTNU and uh, Trondheim Municipality have, since the start of this collaboration, uh, worked together to develop common projects and knowledge. And today, our students and our staff have many different opportunities to cooperate with the uh, municipality. And the munip municipality also helps us to develop our study programs for the future and also address or ask questions which is important for the research activities. Mm. Rita, what do you say is, or what kind of knowledge um, are you developing in this project? It is a wide range of <laughs> topics uh, from uh, age-friendly urban life, public health, uh, environment, sustainable planning, good neighborhoods, and so on and so on. But it's not only um, exchanging knowledge or, the, uh, or finding new ways of doing things, it's also using the city as a laboratory, mm -hmm. testing out what is a good practice, how to um, translate the, the knowledge at the university to the practical life of our city. So we use both um, our human resources, but also the city. Mm -hmm. So, Anna, do you think that the citizens of Trondheim already can see the outcome of this project? Yes, I'm sure, if they, lo if they look a little carefully. <laughs> um, for example, uh, we have some piloting projects. We have uh, drones, uh, boats and buses, and interactive art. So you really have to take a close look and find out where, where this is. And earlier today we saw a picture of this autonomous ferry, and uh, I think uh, that will be operating uh, during the summer. And that's actually uh, the first time you have an autonomous ferry in a, in a city. So. It is a fantastic uh, city to live in because we have this fantastic uh, university and with the cooperation with the city we have the possibilities to uh, make changes both for the inhabitants in uh, Trondheim but also for our country mm -hmm. because the Norwegian University of Technology and Science is a national university and making the forces together we can make uh, changes both for Trondheim, for Norway and maybe also for other parts of the world. Wow, that's a great sky. You should be proud of uh, painting here today. Uh, and today you are here for a prolongment of the commitment between NTNU and the municipality to this project. And I believe the document is ready to be signed for you because this is an official agreement and we are doing it on stage to bridge the gap in reality. Thank you so much to Anne Borg and Rita Ottervik. And good luck with the project. Thank you. We're Thank looking you. forward to the coming years. <laughs> So, uh, dear audience, I would like to remind you that we have a competition going on, if you haven't noticed, and that is with one of the companies in the expo. Because Ducky, I guess you saw them outside, are holding the Climate Championship competition. And this competition ends this week, so make sure to get involved to become more sustainable and win prizes including tickets for next year's conference. And we have promised to give one ticket as well for the person leading at this point, and that is Trine Moholt. 
So, uh, Trina, please take contact with our staff here at Trollen Techport, and the ticket is yours. And the rest of you, you can still win two tickets for next year if you really hurry up and be a part of the competitions for the, for the rest of the week. As the final speaker and, of course, supporter for our way forward, we are happy to give the floor to our conference partner, the Research Council of Norway. They work to promote high-quality research and innovation, which enables Norway in tackling the key challenges it faces. So please welcome to the stage Marisun Le Tveit, Chief Executive of the Research Council of Norway. Der Mare, welcome. Thank you very much, Karianna, dear friends. This has been an extremely inspiring conference. We've heard from some truly impressive innovators. It's obvious that there is a tremendous amount of groundbreaking activity happening in Norway within fields such as healthcare, oceans and energy. We have heard how the Prime Minister and the government is working to support and strengthen the innovation systems. This is crucial. We've also heard how institutions and organizations are working to boost Norwegian innovation and to bridge the gap that the title of this conference refers to. Because there is a gap, or in fact, there are gaps that we need to do something about. There are gaps between the academic sectors, the institutes, the private companies, the public sectors, and different markets. These gaps prevent us from getting the most out of the research results that are being produced and all the innovative ideas that could become profitable, sustainable businesses and cornerstones in communities all over the country. We all know that a Norwegian economy and businesses will face tough challenges in the coming decades. The oil and gas industry will become less important for employment and exports. The OECD's analysis shows that Norway has lost market shares measured in export volume over the 20, past 25 years. And to compensate for these trends, existing companies have to innovate. And we will need to create many, many new companies on fresh, innovative, powerful ideas and research results. And we've seen so many of them here today, and that's really hopeful. The OECD has also pointed out that we're not doing a good enough job on converting promi promising research results into businesses and to scale them up quickly. Developing promising research results into prof profitable companies require many, many years of capital-intensive development. We must modify the system so that capital funding will be more re readily available to innovators and companies in all the phases of capital-intensive development course. The Research Council is collaborating with other organizations to create better, smoother systems for financing. One example very recent, is the Green Platform. This call is organized by Innovation Norway, SIVA, and the Research Council. The Green Platform is based on a single entrance process and will make application easier and will give projects the funding that they need at the development phase where they are. The new, there's a new call for the Green Platform this spring 750 million kroners over four years, that's something. The Green Platform is important, but it's not enough. There's a large potential in our increasingly excellent science system. We must all work to uncover, uncover the hidden gems, because they are there. Universities must do more to make people and ideas visible. Investors can do more to identify high potential opportunities and to recruit people with an eye for potential success. 
we must give more PhD candidates the skills to take their ideas into the marketplace. If we can make some of these systemic changes, we will be in a better position to help the innovators and companies that we've heard from here today, and to help them build the companies that we really need for tomorrow. During the pandemic, we saw, we experienced what's achievable when we all pull the ecosystem together and work relentlessly together to find solutions to a problem. And the pandemic may feel over, but we'll still face multiple crises that needs to be solved. There's a climate crisis still. There's a biodiversity crisis still. We have an energy crisis and we have a horrible war. And with this war, well, several other crises are coming. A geopolitical crisis, a food crisis, migration, financial crisis. All these we need to meet with knowledge and with new knowledge-based solutions. So we talk about the sense of urgency, but friends, this is not sense of urgency, it's urgency, and we need to face it now. So the question to all of us is not, am I contributing? The question to us all is, am I doing everything that I can. Let's close the gap together, because therein lies the solution oh. for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to Mari for giving us the secret words which we all have to grab at the last moment. Dear friends, it's really been a blast spending a day together with you, and this year's conference could have not been more relevant, considering the dark sky that Mari just talked about. There are great opportunities ahead of us, however, that comes also with great responsibility. We are surrounded by technology. These technological solutions, they will get better, they will get cheaper, and of course, easier. Deep technological solutions are going to be the main road to sustainable solutions and a healthier future, I'm for sure. That's our hope, that's our mission, nothing less. However, this is not possible without the most important component of it all, and that's you, the people. And that's why we have gathered you here today, to connect you with like-minded individuals, to break down barriers, to celebrate. And my encouragement to you is, please keep up this good work for the next 364 days. Once again, thank you to all the hosts today, all the speakers, the startups in the expo, our main conference partner, Abelia and Øystein, and the conference partner, Innovation Norway and the Research Council of Norway. All of the above mentioned have been crucial for making this day possible. And I would also like to further thank our members and partners of Trondheim Techport for your continued support. But most of all, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to the audience who chose to spend this Monday together with us. I'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you.